This is The Sim Pit. I'm your guest host, Dave Blair, but the real star of today's show is you, the beginning sim racer. So I wanted to talk about the evolution of somebody that likes to play racing games into a sim racer. And I'd like to cover uh, three main areas. Uh, the first being uh, the controller that you use. Um, the second being your setup and um, you know what you use when you're playing the game and then the third part is how you play the game so to start off um, let's start with the controller so most people they start out with a controller and a base game so I have Forza here running in the background um, I happen to have started on Gran Turismo which is another popular one um, but back then, uh, we used to have to use the controller and tap on the D-pad left and right to get our car to turn. Uh, now you have thumbsticks, which is a lot better. But there was a time when uh, the D-pad, you obviously you knew if I got a steering wheel, it would make me faster because instead of just tapping to get the car to turn, I could actually use a steering wheel and have more control. And, um, you know, as they progressed, uh, these got better. They've, they've built the game to work, especially with, you know, Forza, Gran Turismo, uh, Dirt series. Like the Dirt 5 that just came out last year um, is best played with uh, Xbox controller or controller. Um, that's the way they built the game, and it's really good with the controller. Now... As you get into more of the hardcore sims, especially like iRacing or ACC or even just a, a set of Corsa, you're going to be better off using a wheel, in my opinion. So, if you're the type of person that finds yourself drawn to racing games and it's all you want to play, um, and again, I used to play first-person shooters. I mean, I, I dabbled in a lot of different games, but I've always been drawn to the racing games, and I've really enjoyed cars. I enjoy cars. I enjoy the racing. Uh, that's why I like Forza so much is it gives you access to drive so many different cars, which I really like. So I'm kind of a car nut more than I am a racing nut, but maybe you are really into racing or uh, NASCAR or F1 or whatever, um, but you're drawn to racing games. So if that's you and you're playing with a controller, I would highly recommend uh, looking at force feedback steering wheels it's really going to change the game now when you get a force feedback steering wheel like I said it'll really change the game and you'll start to feel uh, the car way better than you ever could with the rumble and a gamepad and you know you need to seriously think about how much you enjoy playing racing games because the more money you spend you can get uh, much better fidelity. Um, you know, when I first went to a wheel, um, I bought the Microsoft Sidewinder, um, which there wasn't a whole lot of wheels available back then. And while it was good, it wasn't great. And then I kind of moved to the Xbox 360 and I moved into Forza. When I, when I got a hold of Forza for the first time, I was like, man, this is great. And they had the Xbox steering wheel and that's the one that I bought. Um, matter of fact, that's when I started watching Sean Cole on YouTube. Um, you know, and I remember looking at Fanatec wheels and thinking that I was going to upgrade to that, but I didn't. Um, but I did have the, the Xbox steering wheel, and it was really good, in my opinion, at the time. But I didn't know much better. But it was, it was a, basically a weak wheel. Um, after that, I went to the leather-wrapped Thrustmaster um, wheel, and while I think I still have this wheel, and it, I think it's a good wheel, um, I am kind of tempted to get a direct-drive wheel. But again, you, you spend a lot more money as you get up, the better your equipment gets. Um, now, one of the other things they talk about is your pedals. The pedals that came with the Thrustmaster wheel were not that great, and um, I did up up uh, upgrade to the T3 PA Pros with a load cell and had some problems with those and then I upgraded to the uh, Thrustmaster T LCM pedals so 
then they have a good load cell in them and they were a reasonable price. Now I really struggle with um, spending a lot of money on, uh, you know, racing gear. Uh, that's why I haven't bought a direct drive wheel yet. Um, but you can really spend a lot of money. And again, I don't know, it's kind of diminishing returns. Yes, you get better stuff, but is it that much better than the, you know, $200 load cell pedals that I have? Um, you know, because again, you can spend thousands. So I really struggle with that. But if you look at some of the, you know, the pro guys on, uh, on uh, iRacing and stuff like that, I mean, they have some, some high dollar stuff. So that's something you have to figure out for yourself. But what I will say is um, I used to clamp my, pet, my, my wheel and pedals to a desk. And uh, I struggled with the whole, you know, constantly moving the steering wheel on and off. This is the part where I'm telling you about how to set up your stuff. Um, I highly recommend investing in a, in a sim rig. Now, I have the Sim Labs 8020 rig now. Um, if I would have just gone straight to this from the get-go, I probably would have been a much happier camper. But uh, I did end up getting the Play Seat Challenge, which that was okay. That's the one that folds out like a, you know, a, a lounge chair. Um, and it was okay for a while, but it, it made a lot of noise, especially when I started doing videos. You could hear it in the background. So, um, yeah, I recommend the 80-20 rig just to hold. I mean, if you're going to buy a nice steering wheel and some load cell pedals, you really should have somewhere dedicated that you can place it. And, again, this is one of those things where you're becoming more of a sim racer than just somebody playing racing games so you really need to think about what play space that you do have and how to set that up properly because uh, it can be quite involved again uh, you know with the whole rig here and mounting a TV to it um, it can be pricey too on top of what whatever you spend on your wheel and your pedals but Again, if you really want to get into sim racing, these are kind of the, the things that you need to evolve into. Okay, now I'd like to talk about how uh, I used to play my games. So I used to play my games from the chase cam with my controller, uh, and so my view is what you see here. And then, um, well, matter of fact, like Dirt 5 that just came out last year, uh, this is a great way to play that title. Again, it doesn't really work well with the wheel. Um, and I've also heard that Project Cars 3 is better on a controller than it is on a wheel. But if you're playing like a Settle Corsa or ACC or iRacing or some of the more sim games, you're definitely going to want to uh, get a wheel and then drive your car from the inside. Matter of fact, iRacing, that's your only option. So when I first went to a steering wheel, I used to race from the hood cam because when you race from the chase cam, you're at such a disadvantage because you can't see the apexes and you can't see further down the road. And when I was inside the car, I really f struggled with what I could see. So I would say it is okay to race from the hood cam. It's a much better option than trying to race your car with a force feedback steering wheel from the chase cam. So again, you're, you're going to have to move, and it, it's a struggle. I, I struggled with it for a long time. Um, I wanted to still race from the chase cam, uh, and it was a struggle to move to the inside of the car. But one of the, one of the things that people kept talking about was, well, do you want the immersion, or do you want to play a game? And it's like, the more I thought about it and I struggled with it, I really wanted the immersion. And so that's why I moved to the inside the car. So when I moved to the inside the car, this was the view that I was getting. And I just could not see enough. I really felt uncomfortable driving from this view. And it wasn't until uh, Forza 7 and Forza Horizon 4 that uh, Microsoft or Turn 10 Studios gave us the option of removing the steering wheel, which not only did it remove the steering wheel, but it also moved you slightly closer. And I finally, it wasn't like I was racing on the hood anymore. I really felt like I was in the car and I didn't have another steering wheel in front of my steering wheel. So again, with how you play the games, this is one of the areas that I really struggled with. 
was moving, once I had the force feedback steering wheel, moving from the chase cam to the hood cam to inside the car. But once you do, things really start to click. So here we have the view with the steering wheel removed and I finally feel like I'm in the car. I feel like I can see good enough. And this is the way that I usually race this game. Um, and again, the force feedback, it feels really good to me. This is Forza Motorsport 7. I'm hoping for even better in the next one. Um, but this is a view that I can live with. And again, if you're playing iRacing, this is the view that you're gonna get. Now, there are ways to move your seat in other games. Forza uh, Motorsport does not have a seat uh, movement ability, but uh, Dirt Rally 2.0 does, and um, you know a lot of the other sims, Race Room, Assetto Corsa, ACC, you know, a lot of those other sims, including iRacing, have the ability to move your seat. And in some of those, I like ACC, I, it stands out in my mind, um, I do move my seat forward so that I can just see my dash, but I, I don't know, for some reason I like to be able to see more of what's in front of me or the apexes and I feel like in a lot of sims they place you too far back so anyway I like to move my seat I also uh, play the majority of my sims in VR all my eye racing is done in VR um, but yeah I highly recommend if you are into sim racing if you are gonna buy a force feedback steering wheel if you are gonna take that next step and set up your your own sim rig and sim area for it I would recommend taking that next step and either going the VR route, which I highly recommend. It's really good now, um, especially I have the HP Reverb G2. I'm really happy with it. Um, and it also, it sets your field of view correctly and you don't have to do anything. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, you could always go the triple monitor route. And that one, you're going to have to figure out all your angles and it's a little bit more um, setup work but I do know that a lot of people like that better than being enclosed in VR um, then your other route would be one of those super ultra wide monitors I, I would say all three of those VR triples and the super ultra wide would probably be better than a flat screen but for Forza uh, Motorsport and for Forza Horizon, I run on a flat screen TV because they don't, um, they don't, I had a, I had a uh, 34 inch ultra wide monitor at one point and Forza would not scale to that. So just know that going in, that if you buy an ultra wide monitor, you may have games that don't play nice with it. Same thing with triple monitors. If you get triple monitors, you're going to have some games that won't support triple monitors. Now, there's workarounds for that. And then the other thing is, uh, if you go the VR route, there are some games like Forza Motorsport that does not have VR. So, the majority of my games I play in VR, all my sim titles I play in VR. For Forza and Forza uh, Horizon, I play on a flat screen TV, which is good enough. I mean, I don't even play this that much anymore, but I... I do enjoy playing this from time to time and I play it on the TV. So that's basically it. I hope you got something out of this video and um, you know if you are struggling the other thing that I would recommend is get with some other people. Uh, you can join the Sim Pit. We have our Discord link in the description but you can join the Sim Pit and there's lots of people out there that can help you out. Um, sim racing while it is a solo activity, um, you know, I, I race against other people, but I'm racing here by myself. It doesn't have to be a totally isolated thing. I mean, you can get other people to help you out, and I highly recommend that you do. Um, but again, that's just my two cents on, you know, kind of where I came from and where I'm at now. And if any of this has helped you, again, skip a couple steps. If you already know that you want to be a sim racer, if you already know that you want to compete uh, in iRacing or ACC or something at a higher level, then I would highly recommend you know getting the force feedback steering wheel, having it, having it set up properly, getting involved in uh, uh, a group that can help you out along the way, 
and then making your choice on either VR, triples, or something to give you uh, more awareness. And again, it's all about how immersed you can be. Because when I put on the VR helmet and I'm out there racing, I really feel like I'm in the car racing. And it's outstanding. I highly recommend it for everybody. But I understand that not everybody's into sim racing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thumbs up, share if you like it. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.